So we're just going to take this time now, go ahead and get into Jack's long-term play. <laughs> and we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. My, I guess it's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, right? Yes, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comes first. It's produced by Boom Studios. I would imagine, similar to the Batman series... If this goes to a second volume, which I imagine it will, it will be produced by IDW and they would flip it. So it would be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And it's important to know that I don't have all the covers on there because they had one of each turtle holding a helmet. And then also the second one from the right, they had that in a black and white. And then, of course, that one on the far right is actually that thank you variant. So I want, I want to hit this on a few different bullet points of why this is the long-term play. Um, I think that some of our typical Simpleman's comics family audience is probably going to sit there and say, oh, of course this is his pick. He likes Power Rangers. He likes Turtles. And when, that's not wrong. That I do. Um, but I actually think that this is a crossover that is very different from other crossovers, including the Batman Ninja Turtles series, which, by the way, already got a movie. Um, and a movie that was incredibly well-received by critics – I've seen it twice, and it's phenomenal, um, and has a toy line out right now that are some of the hottest toys of the Christmas season. Um, so this concept has been proven popular. A industry, comic industry person that I know who will remain nameless, um, Brad, he was down on this series when... Uh, we had a discussion about it, and, uh, you know, he, he said crossovers don't work. They're not organic. And um, I guess the main thing I want to talk about is why this one very much is. Um, first off, many of you may not be aware, I've talked about it on the show before, there is a history with Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles. The Ninja Turtles appeared on the Power Rangers TV show some 20-plus years ago. Uh, in live action form. So there's already a canon precedent. Because remember, these books take place as part of the canon story from the television show. But there, there is already a canon precedent for these two properties crossing over. Um, there is also... The fan bases are very similar... But there is also another similarity between these two. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is owned by Nickelodeon. And while the Power Rangers are owned by Hasbro, the television and film distribution rights for Power Rangers are owned by Nickelodeon. So while the Power Rangers will most likely be part of the, the movie universe that Hasbro is putting together with All Spark Productions. Um, on television, you can find Power Rangers on Nickelodeon. And I don't know if you guys out there in the Silicon Comics family are aware, but Nickelodeon just struck a enormous deal. Netflix. With Netflix, right. You got to battle and, that Disney Plus monster. Exactly. And that was what that move was done to do. It was, it was done to battle... Disney Plus. Um, immediately, we heard Kevin Eastman come out and say that he believes he's going to get greenlit to do a very adult version of Ninja Turtles. So we could see, you know, think about that 80s comic run with guns and death, and we could very well see that. Um, but the point that I'm making here is we have two properties whose television rights are owned by Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon now has a deal with Netflix. Essentially, this is already optioned. Um, they haven't announced that they're going to do work on this. But the pathway, when you do these crossovers, it's inorganic in a way because now you have two separate companies that have to like come to ta the table and agree on a deal. A lot of the red tape is cut based on kind of the symbiotic nature of these two properties' relationships. So a animated, an animated film, or even possibly a live action, or a series, 
could be created for Netflix as effortlessly as anything else that gets created. Um, it's built in right there. And you know with the money that Netflix just put down, they're going to want content. And if you go on Netflix and you type in Power Rangers right now, you're going to be stunned at the amount of Power Rangers series that are currently on Netflix. Netflix is already all in on the Power Rangers. Netflix does not share their streaming numbers, but they must be getting exceptional views for Power Rangers to, to have so much Power Ranger content on the channel at once. So from an option standpoint, that's where I stand with that. Um, so you have history. You have the ability for this to be optioned very easily. Now let's talk about the reading buzz of it. This issue was exceptional. It is a bad guy, evil Tommy story, which is at the core of what every kind of like classic popular Power Rangers story is. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, where'd he go? Where's your boyfriend? <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's what Power Rangers kind of do best. Um, I really like Shredder in this first issue. Yeah, he's like uh, Emperor Palpatine all up in there. Yeah, he's very dark, very demanding. Um, Karai is working very hard to kind of earn his favor. Um, but you know what impressed me about this book the most? The artwork, the interior artwork in this book. I will put up against any book on the market right now. And I had the name, and I don't have it in front of me at the moment, but shout out to the colorist. The color work yes. in this first issue is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so as a, just a comic book, forget about the option, and forget about the fact that these, these two um, properties have crossed over before and there's history, and that history is beloved by Power Ranger fans at the very least. Um, the comic itself is a great first issue on pace to be a great series yeah mikey gets his butt kicked doesn't he yeah <laughs> yeah and the, it the, in the in the in the in the it's visually stunning yeah it it really is um when you crack the, the issue you're like wow um and it's great because you get enough lore from both franchises in the one yes. book but it's not enough to where they like interfere with each other I, and I think it it's, may slightly lean Power Rangers, um, but I think that's a good thing because I think the comic book audience is built in. I think Turtles fans will pick this up because they're rabid about everything Turtles, and they may get an introduction to the Power Rangers in a way they may not you know, have typically known. And then we talk about the variants. Just like I said, the artwork, I'll put up against it. I will put up the production of their variants, every one, to any book that's been released in 2019 easily. There's not a bad or misplaced cover. You have the Goni Montez foil variants, which they're already awesome in the Power Ranger series. But the concept behind having each turtle hold the Red Ranger helmet, and then we've already seen solicitations for future issues, it looks like each issue, you're going to have each turtle holding each Power Ranger helmet. And then the thank you variant is like Shredder with White Ranger. Right. So, which to me gives a little spoiler because Tommy's the Green Ranger in the issue. Yeah. Um, so something's going to happen there. Uh, also, Boom has already teased that we're going to see Shredder like we've never seen him before. Yeah. I thought we were going to get a first appearance in the first issue of a different form of Shredder. We didn't get it. So that's something to be on the lookout for in future issues in the series. Yeah, and, and if you are wondering, Jenica's not in it. No, Jenica's not in it. I would imagine if they do Volume 2 again and it goes under IDW, that's when IDW yeah. would bring Jenica into this. Um but, yeah, the thank you variant is phenomenal. Um, it is probably the book to get. But then we're skipping over 
the Eastman variant. And the Eastman variant, you talk about a no-brainer. Um, I, as a diehard Ninja Turtle fan and a person who has like a, I've met Eastman several times, and he's such a likable, passionate guy. I love to see he. To me, he fits into that realm of like Todd McFarlane and Don't Shoot Me, but Rob Liefeld, where he's like that '80s, '90s classic um, artist who's also a polarizing character, but he's also synonymous with something. So he's synonymous with Ninja Turtles. I love when he steps outside of what he's synonymous with, and I think doing this is amazing. Getting to see him do art for the Power Rangers which is another property I enjoy, is very cool. The 1 in 50 variant is a black and white kind of sketch cover of that FOC variant that you see there. Um, I think that's going to be successful long term. It, it'll be, in the short term, it may be depressed because there are several store variants. But long term, I think it's going to do very well. And then we talk about the store variants. There are some of the most incredible art I've seen on some of the various store variants. We've our sponsor, Nick from Slab Heroes. He has a store variant, uh, actually two store variants that are absolutely exceptional. Um, we've seen Black Cape Comics, One Stop Comic Shop, um, exceptional store variants. Um, Legends Comics and Games and... Uh, Joel's Art Collectibles have a very cool, very different, um, almost like, it. I don't know who the artist is, it's not Stan Sakai, but it almost has a Stan Sakai kind of feel, it's a ninja type cover, uh, and it's a, a connecting cover set, so there's some amazing cover art out there uh, for store exclusives that I think are going to be fun for completionists to chase, but you know, when you combine all that, I don't have a bad thing to say about this book. These are two properties that had great 2019s. So ending 2019 and going into 2020 uh, aligned together in this crossover with unlimited possibilities, thank you, to the Netflix deal. Um, with an exceptional art program of variants that I think is going to have people hooked beyond issue one. With a book that has a compelling story that has you ready to read issue two literally the second you finish issue one with with interior art that is like i said as good as anything anything on the market and i mean anything this is a phenomenal delivery on what could have been looked at and has been looked at from the outside as simply a cash grab crossover um it's anything but that shout out to the people at boom studios Shout out to people at IDW. This is an exceptional book. This is the long-term play of the week. And guys, remember, the long-term play of the week doesn't mean you're going to be able to flip it this week. That's not what this is. This is a book that I believe will have value and importance within the collecting community for some time. But it may take some time to get there. Either way, do not sleep on this one. Do not ignore this one. Buy what you like. But this is one I certainly love. Yeah, I thought it was a great first issue. And like I said, if you're a Turtle fan and a Power Ranger fan or just one of the other, it's definitely worth picking up because it's a fantastic read, especially for the first issue. But then again, you have that nostalgia factor built in, and it's just a lot for those franchises. So great long-term play. Yeah.